My name is Lindsay, and welcome to my life. I have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, also known as ADHD. You might have heard it before, maybe from your psychology class, your friend, or even online. At some point in your life, I'm sure you've had difficulty sitting still in lecture, paying attention while studying, or being engaged in impulsive behaviors. However, when these behaviors persist over time, they become signs of ADHD, a neurodevelopmental condition. ADHD affects various aspects of my life. Typically, I have trouble focusing and can become easily distracted. This is known as inattentiveness. I also have trouble sitting still for short periods of time, known as hyperactivity. I've been told that I can get impulsive at times. Often, my body acts before my mind, which can lead to unwise decision-making, inability to ignore danger, and inability to learn from previous mistakes. But what's really ticking in my head to make me, well, me? ADHD can be explained by physiological and neurochemical mechanisms. How about I show you? Let's look into the brain for a second. At the front exists the prefrontal cortex, which is part of the frontal lobe and contributes to complex behavior, planning, and personality development. Individuals with ADHD, like me, tend to have a smaller right side compared to the left, resulting in small right brain activity. A study showed that 90% of ADHD children also had right cortical lesions. In another study, children with ADHD were also diagnosed with hypoperfusion, known as low blood flow, in the frontal lobe while there was high blood flow in the occipital and temporal cortices. Now let's delve even deeper on the neurochemical side. Norepinephrine, a stress hormone that activates our fight or flight response, and its precursor dopamine, a chemical that contributes to our pleasure and reward system, are both neurotransmitters and are found in low levels in ADHD patients. Both dopamine and norepinephrine also contribute to maintaining thoughts, alertness, effort, motivation, and increased focus, so it's easy to see why low levels of these two would affect individuals like me. This is my doctor, Dr. Miranda. She can tell you more about some treatments I've done and I'm using now. Hi, Lindsay. There are two general types of treatments for ADHD that treat different aspects of ADHD, pharmacological and psychosocial treatments. So what do each of these treatments address? Great question. Pharmacological treatments have more of a direct impact on the neurochemistry side of ADHD, as discussed earlier. Medications like amphetamines are stimulants. Stimulants are the most effective treatment for ADHD and have a responsiveness rate of 70 to 80 percent. What they do is they block reabsorption of dopamine and norepinephrine so they keep their levels high. How about psychosocial treatments you mentioned? So cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT is a type of psychosocial treatment that can be done individually or in groups. CBT is designed to promote self-controlled behaviors through self-reflection and control strategies like time management. So an advantage of group therapy is that it allows children the opportunity to improve their behaviors without the use of medication. It is actually the preferred method for children under the age of seven because before this age, you haven't yet fully developed your um, self-regulation abilities. Wow, thank you for making everything clearer in terms of choice of treatments. I personally find CBT helpful for myself, but everyone is different. Yeah, absolutely, Lindsay. Anytime you or your friends have any questions, always feel free to come to us, we can help you out. Thanks, Doc. Have a great day.